an intensive i saw living water this mass we shall be praying for all your personal intentions in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit my dear brothers and sisters let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, 
unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Bless our God. Let the voice of his praise resound. Of the God who gave life to our souls and kept our feet from stumbling. Our response. Cry out with joy to God on the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. To him I cried aloud, with exaltation ready on my tongue. Our response? Cry out with joy to God on the earth. Blessed be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold from me his merciful love. Our response? Cry out with joy. down from heaven, says the Lord. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. 
Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I think you and I are those fortunate ones who have been invited by the Lord to be in relationship with the Father. By our baptism, by us becoming Christians, we have joined the Jesus movement. Each one of us called to be an apostle and a disciple of the Lord. And how faithful have we been to this calling of ours. Jesus invites us constantly to feed on Him so that once we start feeding on Him, we will first of all never be hungry again. In other words, our wants will completely be satisfied. There will be nothing more that we require because we have Jesus in our life. And secondly, more importantly, whosoever feeds on Him will live forever. This is the promise he gives, that we will not experience death. We need to understand what this loaded statement is. Every time we come to a funeral mass, we begin to wonder what's going to happen next to this person who has passed away. And our Christian faith teaches us so much that Jesus wants us to be where he is. He's gone before us to prepare a place for each one of us so that where he is, we too will be. In other words, he wants us to enter into paradise, into heaven, which is our homeland, where we will have eternal life. And therefore, for a Christian, one who's been faithful to Christ, death does not have the last word. It's only the passage to life eternal. I pray that each one of us, my dear brothers and sisters, remain faithful to our calling as Christians. That each of us may continue to feed on Jesus because we know that by feeding on Him alone, we are guaranteed and ensured that promise of eternal life with Him in paradise. I offer to Him in bread we bring you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of the whole to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of the faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who you sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Our communion hymn, take this and eat it.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our recessional hymn, I've Got a River of Life. Oh, 